Today on AE Blues, we are going to explore the set mat effect. This effect will enable you to use one mat for many layers and has other advantages as well. Some users may find it a struggle to use this effect. We will learn why and how to use it properly. Hey everybody, welcome to AE Blues. My name is Roy. Today I want to talk about the set mat effect and how to use it properly. Now, let's say I have this text and this shape, and I want to mask the text using this shape. I want to use the alpha information of this shape for this text. One common way to do this is just placing the text underneath the layer that I want to use as a mat and just toggle in the alpha mat. So now I can use the layer above as an alpha mat, and that's good. But if I want to see the layer also, it requires me to do a little setup. I need to duplicate the shape and place it underneath. And now I want to parent the mat to the shape itself. So I can move both if I need to. If I need more layers to include, in this mat, I will have to duplicate also the mat. So let's see if I have another text. Now the text needs a mat, so I will duplicate the mat. And now I have another duplicate of the mat. So for each duplicate of text or for each layer, I will need to duplicate a mat. If I create a shape layer here and I want to include it in this mat, I will have to duplicate the mat, put it underneath, and set the shape layer as an alpha mat. So all of these mats are linked to this one shape. This is one way to do this, uh, but you can see uh, the need here is to use only one mat. Okay, so let's learn how to do this with the set mat effect. I'm gonna just delete all the layers and just use two layers, okay? So I need to use this layer, this shape layer, as a mat for this layer. I'm going to do this with an effect. I'm going to call the effect set mat. And I'm going to use the take mat from layer to shape. So now the text is only seen in this shape. And I can move the shape. I can just duplicate the text and I have many layers that only use this one mat. I can just add a shape here and I can just copy the set mat effect to this shape. And now this shape layer also uses only one mat. And the mat layer, it doesn't have to be in a particular place in the layer stack. It can be further in time. It can be trimmed down. So you have a lot of control here. And as you can see, I was able to do this very easily. That's because I'm only using native vector layers in After Effects, shapes and text. But let's see another example. I have two layers here. One is just a photo and the other is Photoshop text. This is not a live text. I can't edit it. I can scale it. I can see it getting soft. It's just a pixel layer. Now let's just see what happens if I want to use this still image as a mat for this text when both layers are, are not vector layers. Okay, you can see in here this switch, which means this is a vector layer that has continuously rasterize option. Okay, now let's see what happens here when it's not. Okay, I'm going to just type set mat and I'm going to use the still. Okay, so you can see nothing happens. Nothing happens because by default, the effect will stretch the mat. So if the mat was this size, it will now change to this size. I will remove the stretch. And now it appears to work fine until I move the layer and you can see I also move the mat. Now what is happening here? I'm going to toggle the 
triangle here and see the layer render auto in After Effects. There's an effect and then there's the transform. So if I move the layer, I'm moving it with the effect. What I want to do is the way that this transform will be before the effect. So if I move the layer first, I move it, then the effect is applied. And this involves toggling this switch. And one of the things this switch does is reverse the render order of the layer. Now I don't see the switch available for this layer, so I will pre-comp this layer. I'm gonna choose leave all attributes because I don't want to move the effect to the pre-comp. I just want to create another source for this layer as a pre-comp. So I'm going to just click OK, and now I can see, I can toggle this switch on. And now I can move the layer. What if I want to move the mat? Let's see what happens. You can see nothing really happens in terms of the mat because this is also a pixel layer. The top layer is using an effect to call on the mat, but the effect doesn't know I'm moving the mat. The only way it could know is if I reverse the render order in the mat. I will pre-comp the mat and leave all attributes. Click OK. Hit the collapse switch. Now you can see it works as expected. So what we learned so far is in order to use the set mat effect properly, in some cases you will have to collapse or continuously rasterize both your layer and your mat. Now let's see another example. I have a text here and I have a solid layer with a mask. So without the mask it looks like this and with the mask it looks like this. Use the set mat effect for this layer and call on the solid. Now as I move it, nothing happens because the layer doesn't know I have a mask applied to this layer. I can let the layer know about it using this feature here to include masks. And now this layer can call on the mask on the other layer. Now if I move the solid, Nothing happens because this effect doesn't know I'm moving this layer unless I hit the continuously rasterize switch. So now I can move the mat. I can move the mask. I can move just there and everything works fine. So you see also in this case, you have to make sure your mat and your layer are both continuously rasterized. And now let's do a little exercise. I want to use this text and to reveal it in each one of these rectangles. Now this is a Photoshop text, it's pixel. So if I move it and I want to use the set matte effect, I know that I need this switch available. So I can either pre-comp like we did before or because it's Photoshop text, I can just convert to editable text. So now it's a layer with the continuously rasterize switch. And I want to use the Illustrator shape as a mat with the set matte effects. Because it's in the Illustrator shape, I know I can toggle the continuously rasterize switch for the layer. I can just add the set matte effect and choose the Illustrator shape. And the layer is masked by the Illustrator shape. Now I want to do the same thing for the After Effects shape, so I'm going to just take it down and change it from the Illustrator shape to the After Effects shape, and you can see it works fine. Okay, now let's move on. I'm just going to move to the solid. Okay, so I'm going to change the effect to the solid, and I will enable the effect. The solid is with the continuously rasterize switch, but it's also with a mask. I will accept the masks. And now it works fine. So last I have the Photoshop shape. I'm going to move the layer here and I'm going to change it to the Photoshop shape, enable the effect. And I have a problem here because this layer is not collapsed. I can pre-comp, I can leave all attributes and set the collapse switch and now it works fine. Okay, I'm going to show you another way.
This is a Photoshop layer. I can just right click, reveal in project and replace the layer with a solid. Right click, replace footage with a solid, same color. And now it's a solid that has the continuously rasterized switch. Let's see another example for the use of set matte effects and this time from the world of compositing. Say I have this uh, composite, I need to place this character on the background. I want to add a light wrap effect to better integrate uh, the keyed element in the background. So to make a light wrap, you need to duplicate your background and use the background as a kind of inner glow of your of your keyed footage. I can duplicate the background, place it on top, and I add the set matte effect and use the footage. Now, as you can see, it uses the footage, but it doesn't know I moved it. So I need to pre-comp, leave all attributes, and just hit the collapse switch. Now I have this. Now to, to use the, the light wrap, I need to invert the mat. Okay, now I have this. And I add the fast blur effect like this. And I duplicate the mat, place it underneath, and just invert it. Okay, so now I have, with only one layer, uh, a light wrap setup. I can just add the screen blend mode, and now I have this. Now this is before, and this is after. I can control the opacity. Now, if I need to move the background, if I change anything, you see here, if I press U, U, I'm not seeing anything. That's because I didn't change any transform properties for the background. But if I do need to do that, I would have to also pre-comp this and press the collapse because as you learned so far, if you want to use the set matte effect properly, you will need to reverse the render order of your layers. And in order for you to do that, you will need to set the continuous to rasterize or collapse switch for those layers. So any transform will occur before the effect and not after. And that's it about set matte. I hope this tutorial helped you better understand how to use it properly. Till next time, take care.